Well, this is our last program before Labor Day weekend, so we want to take a look at a group of workers who play an integral role in California's economy. In the 1960s, Cesar Chavez mobilized national boycotts on their behalf. They're California's farm workers, and they harvest the fruits and vegetables that fill our supermarkets and our plates at dinner time. Labor writer and photojournalist David Bacon has been photographing farm workers for years, documenting their lives and working conditions. David, how have farm workers fared in today's, in terms of what Cesar Chavez envisioned for them? Well, I think farm workers, um, their standard of living has been falling since the heyday of the union. There was a period in the late 1970s and the early 1980s when farm worker wages were about twice the minimum wage. Today, farm workers make the minimum wage, and there are a lot of people working out there in the fields who are making less than minimum wage. So just taking it in terms of people's income and how much people get for doing this hard work, um, people's income has, relatively speaking, dropped. Um, so I think that farm workers are not doing um, that well. California, you know, we are the salad bowl of the world, which means that what we grow here in California are fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Um, we grow a lot of cotton, but not too many people work in cotton since they brought in the machines. We do have machines in California fields. If you go driving through the Salinas Valley, for instance, you'll see people on machines packing lettuce or packing tomatoes into boxes there. But it still takes somebody, Belva, who's working in front of that machine or behind that machine, picking the tomatoes or cutting the lettuce. So overwhelmingly, that kind of labor is still stoop labor, you work bent over all day, that is a big toll on, on the body of any human being that does it over a prolonged period of time. We talked about pay, but the living conditions for these workers, in some of your photography, um, you've sh shown some p conditions that are certainly less than, than uh, good for the health of those workers living there. And, and the two things are actually very closely related to each other because First of all, we do have a housing shortage in rural California. Um, it's hard to find a place to rent, um, especially if you're a migrant. If you're traveling with the crops, um, you don't have first and last month's rent to put down as a deposit on an apartment, for instance, something that people living in cities are used to having um, to do. So there's not enough places, just simply not enough mm -hmm. for people to as live. As we're talking, let's look at some of the photographs. Okay, um, but low wages also mean that there's a lot of overcrowding, for instance. Um, the, according to government statistics, if you have more than one and a half people living per room in your house, that's considered extreme crowding. In some areas of California, like Watsonville, you have three people living per room. Um, I've gone and visited people at home, for instance, living in trailers near Salinas, where you have 10 people or 13 people living in a trailer. And this reason is pretty simple, Belvin, and that is that um, the rent for the trailer is about $1,300 a month. The only way you're going to be able to pay that is by basically a lot of people sharing that expense. And at $7.50 an hour or $8 an hour, it takes a lot of people basically to pay that rent. Who looks out for the health of these workers living in, sometimes just in the out of doors? Well, um, living in the out of doors is an increasing problem actually for farm workers. Partly it, um, we see people who are recent arrivals in California who have yet to sort of stabilize their situation um, living out of doors. We've seen that for many, many years in places like San Diego. But I was just recently in Fresno um, visiting workers who are living out of doors um, near Reedley, California. I've um, interviewed people living in the wine country, which is probably of all the places in California, the highest wage area of California, and yet, um, the housing shortage is such that you find people um, living out of doors. We don't really have proper regulation for housing conditions for farm workers. We do have regulations about um, working conditions. Um, in fact, we just passed in 2005 regulations about heat exposure. That's one of the biggest problems, especially in the summer. We've had 10 people die in the fields in California from 2005 today to today um, because of heat exposure. So we do have these regulations, but part of the problem is enforcement. Mm -hmm. Farm workers are 
um, unless they have a union or unless they have lawyers that help them or unless they get organized in their own communities, it's very difficult for people to enforce those and, regulations. And what about the children? I've, there were children in the photos that we just saw. Well, we do still have children in California fields. Um, Partly, again, this is economic necessity. Most farm worker families will tell you, Velva, that um, people growing up often talk about after school, during the weekdays, um, going out and helping their parents out in the fields, or it's pretty common in farm worker families um, for people to work, for young people to work out in the fields on a Saturday or a Sunday if there's work going on on a Sunday. And that's, again, because families need the income. Sometimes, though, you do see people young people working, and there's some photographs that we've been showing yeah. here of and, young people and, and working on machines. And finally, the whole area of, of, of being documented or not, what do we know about that? Are these people in any way taken advantage of because they're not documented? Well, yes. Um, we have about maybe 650,000 farm workers here in California. Um, nobody knows for sure. I would guess that over half of those people are folks who don't have immigration papers. Um, what that means today is often that people are trapped here. Um, I just recently talked to a guy in um, near Santa Rosa who hasn't seen his family for five years. And the reason is because if he goes home to see his family okay. and then he has to come back here, it costs $5,000 okay. to cross the border. Well, it's an interesting story that we haven't heard too much about. So we thank you for bringing your photos and information. Thank you, Belva. Well